Hi, I'm Eric in Driver Development and Bison Transport, and today I'm going to show you how to do a quick physical pre-trip on your reefer. Now, obviously this ladder is a stand-in for your catwalk. Normally you'd be climbing up on your catwalk to do this. Remember to wear your safety glasses and a pair of gloves. Be safe. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is open up the reefer doors, and that's also the first thing you're going to check. You want to make sure these reefer doors are working properly. There's a little spring latch here that you'll have to lift. It's a little wire latch, and then both reefer doors will open, or they should open, as long as they're not damaged. If there is any damage, remember any defects you find, you're going to want to send in on Macro 39. Once you've checked the doors, and you're making sure that the doors are working properly, before getting near anything in this reefer, you know these are satellite controlled reefers and they may start up at any moment. You don't want them starting up while you're checking belts or hoses or that sort of thing. So you want to make sure that you reach right in back here and turn off the little switch. That's a microprocessor switch that turns the reefer off completely so that it cannot start while you're doing your pre-trip. So the other things you want to check here are you want to check all the wires. Make sure there's no loose wires that are frayed or coming off anywhere. Uh, check the connections to the battery, to the various electrical parts that are on the reefer uh, for corrosion or loose wires. And then you're going to want to move on and check all the hoses. You're looking for leaks, cracks, cuts, any sort of thing that might cause a problem. While you're at it, if there's a uh, throttle linkage. You can just check and make sure that's still attached properly something that comes off fairly fairly easily and uh, of course the other thing you're going to want to do is check the oil. Once you're done checking the oil you also want to make sure you check the belts. And you're looking for about a half inch to an inch of play. If you discover a belt that's very loose again you're going to want to send in that message 39 indicating the issue. And you're also going to want to check the coolant level. This might be a little bit tricky for people who have a shorter stature but your best thing is hold on to this top cover while you flip this lever right here and you're going to want to continue holding on to it because you don't want to let go. It may flip completely open and then you won't be able to get it down again. So just continue holding it and you'll see the coolant reservoir right there and you can make sure that's full of coolant. In order to check the coolant on the carrier vector, you can open the side door here and then if you look way up you can see the plastic reservoir there with the red coolant liquid in it. And in some cases there may be another belt there as well that you can check. And you don't want to do anything that might injure yourself. So in this case a visual check is just fine. And then you're going to want to close that again before you leave. And the reason for that is because if you let go of it, you'll see it opens way up and you may not be able to reach it to pull it down again and that would pose a problem. So my advice, always hang on to it while you're checking those things and then firmly close it. Once you've done your pre-trip, you want to make sure that you turn that microprocessor switch back to the on position so that the reefer is able to start. So on a carrier reefer, the master switch lockout is right here. It's this switch right here. And you want to make sure you turn that off before working inside the reefer, doing a pre-trip, that sort of thing. And the on button to actually start the reefer is a little different. It's actually mounted separately on the trailer right here. And you'll see the reefer power light come on before it starts. One tip during your pre-trip inspection is to always check these hoses. Now these are drain hoses for the reefer. You want to make sure that there's no debris. And in the winter time, these can get jammed up with ice. So you may need to run a defrost to clear those hoses. Uh, another tip is you want to make sure that these rubber uh, drain hoses here commonly referred to as kazoos in the industry, are in place and uh, not missing. And if those are missing, you want to make sure that you get them replaced. In a reefer trailer, you'll see there's a chute running right from the front of the uh, trailer, almost to the back. And this chute is designed to create airflow. So there's air running through the chute. It should come around, around the back of the trailer. It'll flow through the pallets all the way back to the front of the trailer, thus keeping that moving air circulating in the trailer, keeping the product at the temperature it should be at. Now the chute should droop down like this, about four to six inches. 
uh, in order for there to be enough airflow through there and that's something a reefer driver should always check. Uh, it's possible that they're velcroed on there really tight and that there's no airflow at all coming through that chute. So you want to make sure that there is that four to six inches of droop and the air is able to flow through there and if there is a situation where you can clearly see that the airflow is not going to be possible because it's velcroed on too tight you're going to want to contact your fleet and send in message 39 note it has a defect on your EDVIR and uh, contact your fleet before you leave that customer <laughs>